What's up Thrashers, and welcome back to the Thrash Maniac 99 YouTube channel, and this is going to be the start of five straight videos where it's going to be an album review from an album that came out this year that I didn't review when it came out, because either I wasn't doing the reviews, or I forgot about these albums until later, or I did listen to them, but just didn't bother to review them because this was back during the time when Marvel Studios Cup was going but real quick before I get into this review a little shout out to my fellow Ohio metalhead pals the thralls of metal who I almost met last week while on vacation sucks that didn't happen but I uh, got this shirt from them and I thank you guys for that and now with that plug out of the way Time to get to the review. So for this review, I'm reviewing the latest offering that came out back in June from maybe my favorite Norwegian black metal band, even though I'm going to talk about it in just a moment, but my favorite Norwegian black metal band, Dark Throne, and their 19th studio album, Eternal Hails. So brief little lesson for you who may have forgotten about Dark Throne. So, Dark Throne's been around since 1986. They have gone through everything. They've been death metal, black metal, crust punk, classic metal, doom metal, pretty much every, you, whatever you can think of that I think they've been that style at one point or another. But, I'm here to talk about Eternal Hails, their 19th album, so... Really, over the past several albums, really, I would say, ever since FOAD, they've been slowly starting to weave in more of the classic heavy metal style, especially starting with The Underground Resistance, which that was one of my favorite albums of 2013. And then over the past few albums, they just keep bringing in more of these classic heavy metal tones to their music. Especially on their last album, Old Star, which I think I ended up reviewing that album when it came out back in 2019. Wow, I can't believe it's only been two years since that album came out. But I definitely heard that on Old Star, it just kept going into this classic heavy metal realm. But starting to bring in a little bit of doom, doom metal into their music. And but blending it with a bit of a blackened style, not full-on black metal. And even as the back of the album, which I do have the CD behind me, I just didn't want to go grab it, but even on the back of the CD, it says Epic Black Heavy Metal. And that's essentially what this album is. So, with his master's voice starting the album off, getting some of that clean guitar before... It gets into some speed metal riffing that, and beats that kind of harkened back to Motorhead. And I also love the quick, slow breaks in between the fast riffing going on. And then we even get some chuggy riffs happening during some of the faster pace <coughs> moments. And I even hear a riff... <coughs> excuse me. And I even hear a riff going on that sounds something similar to what Metallica probably could have written or would have written and then once the song gets slower it gets into this doom territory that I'll talk more about when I give my overall synopsis and opinion on the album but yeah it gets slow and doomy in the second half of the song along with a wonderful dark melodic doom solo coming in to the end with an awesome riff to close the song out as well as the clean guitars coming back to like let you know hey we're not that we're not gone yet but then we get into hate cloak which was the first single off of the album when it was released back earlier this year and my god you want to talk about classic sounding riffing this song top to bottom just has so many amazing riffs going on. I mean, Dark Throne in recent albums, they've been able to craft some riffs that sound like they came from the 70s and 80s, but they make it sound fresh. And I think that's been the strength of Dark Throne's more recent output since Underground Resistance, is that they're able to take these classic sounding riffs, but just make them sound like as if they were written in present day, which is really cool 
when bands do that. I mean, and with these opening riffs we get in the first couple of minutes, I mean, these are just classic 70s metal riffs going on. And then after that, the riffs get a bit chuggy to kind of get your head nodding along. And even early, like two and a half minutes into the song, we get a dark solo to kind of give the track some kind of evil magic. And then as the song stops for a moment, and then the hi-hat comes in, we get into a nice, like, Celtic Frost-style groove. After all, Celtic Frost is arguably, along with Bathory, the biggest inspiration on Dark Throne, or the biggest influence on Dark Throne, you could argue. And man, this groove, it just sounds so Celtic Frost-like. All was missing was Nocturno Culto doing a tribute to Tom G. Ward by going, ooh, that was the only thing missing. Um, plus, it's when it gets into that groove, it sounds like a completely different song. And then even after the groove, we get some sinister, we get a sinister riff that almost combines the vibes of the opening Doom stuff and the Celtic Frost groove going on. And it was an awesome riff to add some more evil to it. And then even towards the end of the song, you hear Fenris shouting out the album title, like as if, hey, this is for you fans, and thank you. And then we end off with more of that doominess from the beginning, but with a little bit more of a sinister tone behind it, which I really, really liked. Wake of the Awakened, it gets back to more of that Motorhead-inspired speed metal going on as the riffs just keep that speed alive, and we even get a Moog in the background to provide an almost 70s prog rock feel, like Pink Floyd in the background, even though it's this isn't prog, it's still very much stripped down. And as the riff starts to slow down, it goes back to that doomy vibe of the other tracks, but it doesn't stay doomy for very long as it gets back into the speed, especially within the riffs. And despite them short doom moments, this was maybe the most speed metal oriented song of the album, at least in my eyes. And then the penultimate track, Voyage to a North Pole Adrift, which was one of the best songs on the album, starting off with an atmospheric riff before it gets very bluesy, kind of like something that would have been on like a Danzig album, for example. And then afterwards we get more, we get another doomy riff before it goes back to the blues riff. And then some more speed metal riffing coming in to kind of add this add some more intensity to the song and then it starts to settle into a groove with some riffing that sounds like something that Megadeth probably would have done and then even after that we get some iron we have some old school Iron Maiden vibes coming in with a riff to kind of build up to more of the speed parts before the best solo of the album comes in and while these classic Iron Maiden inspired riffs are continuing to flourish until that atmospheric riff from the beginning comes along as well as some dark chants and it gets slow to close the song out and then we get the finale Lost Arcane City of Apocra which starts off with this awesome heavy riff with more of that doomy style and then it gets into another great riff before we get like a nice little punky riff which was kind of out of nowhere kind of like a riff that could have been off of their more punky era in the mid to late 2000s a little bit to kind of remind you hey we still got just a tiny dash of that punk vibe still in the music but we wanted to favor more classic metal in our style now and then the song even gallops for a bit before things change and slow down dramatically as some clean guitars come back with some chanting and then the moog returns and then like really the end of this song in the album definitely sounds like something pink floyd would have done to close out an album with the moog and the guitars kind of bringing some of that kind of spacey psychedelic vibe and to provide some more room to breathe for the instruments towards the end to kind of calm things down to kind of close the album out 
So overall, I mean, this album is just packed full of riffs beyond riffs beyond riffs that harkens back to, like, classic Black Sabbath, Celtic Frost, Old Iron Maiden, Metallica, Megadeth, Danzig. I mean, these riffs do not mess around, and... And you kind of got this vibe a little bit whenever Old Star came out. Some people may think this is beyond what they were doing on Old Star. I still like Old Star uh, just a little bit more than this album. These albums are kind of neck and neck along with each other for maybe my second favorite Dark Throne album. Because my favorite will always be A Blaze in the Northern Sky. But, man, this is... Old Star kind of started a new era for the band because now we're getting these like blackened classic heavy metal doom metal songs with some speed moments in there and I absolutely love it. And also the production of this album, this is actually the first time since Soulside Journey, their first album, where somebody different is producing the album and not the band themselves or Fenris and Nocturno they actually got a couple different people coming in to produce the album and the production on here this sounds like a late 70s early 80s demo recording and it's got such a nice charm to it and that's one of the things I love about to make it sound even more old school because you know Dark Throne they love their old school stuff but overall I mean, a lot of these riffs, like I said, just harken back to Sabbath, Celtic Frost, Megadeth, Metallica, Maiden, Danzig, and some Pink Floyd moments, especially when the Moog comes in on a couple of tracks. Overall, this is a fantastic fucking album. This, initially when I listened to it, I gave it an 8.5 in my head, but now after listening to it over and over... I'm going to give this album a 9.5 out of 10 right now. So as of right now, the score is a 9.5 out of 10. It could become a 10 out of 10 the more I listen to it even further. Actually, you know what? Scratch the 9.5. It is a 10 out of 10. This is a fucking phenomenal album, and I can't wait to hear what they're, what they're going to do for their 20th studio album whenever that comes, probably in a two to three years or so. But what did you guys think of Eternal Hails by Dark Throne? Let me know in the comments below. And once again, shout out to Thralls of Metal for being cool pals and for this shirt. Because I too am a son of Midwestern darkness. So, anyway, so as far as what reviews are coming out after this, tomorrow I'm going to be reviewing At the Gates, The Nightmare of Being. And then, I believe, after that... I mean, the schedule could change, but I think after that I'm going to be reviewing the new Nunslaughter album. And then, I believe, I got... I'm thinking I'm going to probably end up doing the new Between the Buried and Me, and I think the new Gojira. I'll have to go back to my post I put in the community tab on my YouTube page. But, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Horns high, and I will see you guys very soon. Do you know how to use Dude, a gun? Really? I was literally in the freaking menu. God. Ow! I literally just pick a spawn. Well, mm -hmm. Tails, time to die. No one isn't. No one isn't. Why is everybody coming over here? Yeah, wait. No! <laughs> um. What? Yeah, we're gonna have a nice day. We're not here. open right now. We're not open here, mister. Damn it! <laughs> what the oh, no fire? I died from my own grenade. Can the fire oh, go man. away, please? <laughs> Thank you. Oh my! The pigeon struck again.